Who's yeah. the greatest basketball player of all time? Michael Jordan. <sighs> LeBron's number two, though, but Michael Jordan definitely is number one, bro. You got, He's you got every single argument in his head right now ready to come at you. That. Well, when you had Scotty, Scotty Lewis, people were like telling me, yo, Scotty, Scotty's playing. It's crazy because when I was doing it, that was the one of the things I wanted to do was try to get people that were played overseas or well-known as well. Definitely shout out who got next basketball league, man. The Monmouth County ballers that have been playing, just the whole community in general. Nah, my whole career has been a lot of obstacles. Uh, my dad's been in, he was in prison since I was three months old. You know what I mean? I'm doing things. I don't have nobody to look up to. Nobody did it before me. I went to three different schools in three different states. Yeah, I played in two different countries. How old are you? 28. <laughs>to the MCM podcast number 19. My name is Max. And my name is JR. And today we're going to have another guest in the sports realm. And we're really excited about this because I actually heard about him through Instagram. And it's about this awesome league that's coming up. But his name is Neil Thompson. And we're going to talk all about how he, you know, he's a Monmouth County guy. He played at Monmouth Regional, was a freaking star there. He went on to play at Brookdale and they won a national championship there. He was the Division Three College Player of the freaking year, and now he's back here after playing at Wilmington University, and we're going to talk about this viral league he started, which has kind of caught everyone by storm in Monmouth County, and uh, Neil, how are you doing today, bro? I'm doing good, man. I appreciate you guys for having me on this platform. Uh, this place is dope right here. Uh, the setup is dope. I love it a lot. Definitely appreciate you guys for having me on here. Uh, we're doing big things right now. We're just uh, trying to expand. We got the Who Got Next. Cool. Uh, and then really just me, basketball-wise. I'm um, coaching right now. I uh, had a great uh, basketball career. Uh, going to uh, breaking the school record in points and steals at Monmouth Regional. Still hold that record to this day. Uh, waiting for them to put me in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> they should. <laughs> what, wait, what, how many points? Uh, 1244. Holy shit. Yeah, 350 in steals. <laughs> yeah. How many did you average per game? Steals? Uh, no, points. Uh, points, it's probably like around 17, 18 until senior year is like 23. Dude, you're, you're yeah. balling. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I went to Shore Regional, so that's uh, Monmouth Regional. It wasn't really a – you weren't like a rival school. We always played you guys. I think yeah, all of Shore yeah. Regional's rival was Rumson. But all, there's plenty of good teams around here. Yeah, like, definitely. You know there's definitely saying? some good teams out here. Uh, Neptune was always a good team. Uh, who else was good? CBA was CBA. always a good team. CBA grad right there. Yeah. <laughs> Neil Terrible. thought, Neil thought no JR. No basketball talent Neil thought JR. He, he looked JR. He's like, yeah, this kid's a sharpshooter. <laughs> yeah. Now, for real, I walked in. I'm like, what school did you go to? Like, I, I never see you play, but you look like you shot somebody's eyes out. Hey, <laughs> dude. Uh, JR exudes I, I, that. I have absolutely zero basketball talent. <laughs> you you are, couldn't be farther from, from correct. <laughs> of course, I, I do ball, but... Um, of course, this quarantine thing, I, I have no athleticism right now after eating so much. I'm getting back in the gym. I just started going back to retro, so I'm trying to get anything back. But um, I would always play intramural with my friends at Monmouth University. It would get heated. My biggest thing is we would always play against um, in intramurals. Like, my biggest thing was the, the football team yeah. would play. I don't think that's fair. Because yeah, they're, they're – listen, I know they're not Division One ball players, But they're athletes. But they're athletes. Yeah. So these guys, oh, my God. There's one guy, was uh, Tommy or Barry? I forget. I think he went to Tom's River North. He put up like 35 on us. <laughs> I couldn't catch them the whole time, man. It was so bad. No, nah, they always do that though. They always try to <laughs> jump in there and uh, act like they don't. They never play basketball, but they're athletes though. They they're are good. Well, I they thought it was are. a bunch of the linemen coming to play us. I was like, all right, let's just run the ball, transition the whole time. <laughs> We're good. But then a few of like the wide receivers and running backs came. I was like, we're screwed. <laughs> yeah, I never did intramural basketball, but I once did an intramural soccer league. And it was bullshit. You could have two of the Division One soccer players on your oh, intramural yeah, team. Yeah, and I was like, not winning. You I was like, what is this shit? Nah, they'll run circles around <laughs> right. so I was like, it's just bullshit. That's what they do every day. day. So your decision when you went to Brookdale, what I love is, you know, you were talking and I read about you. You didn't have a lot of offers and stuff coming out of Monmouth Regional, but you made the best out of your situation. And I remember reading about that. That 2013, 2012 team at Brookdale, you guys broke records. Weren't you 33 and one? Yep. Yeah, 33 and one. <laughs> uh, 
that year right there, they could have made a documentary out of that year. It was crazy. Sandy hit that year. We started with 21 people uh, in the beginning of the season, and then uh, January hit. A couple guys failed off. A couple guys, uh, Sandy situation. So we ended up with uh, eight in January until the rest of the season ended. Wow. So we finished with eight guys, and we were, I think, we were like 15-0 and 0 at that point. Yeah. Who was the one team you lost to? Uh, Maynard. Okay. We lost to him at the buzzer. I think it was like we were down by one or two, and then we couldn't get the shot off. But we needed that one, though. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was uh, just me. It was me and uh, I think Amir Gilliam. He was the other sophomore. Uh, both of us, and then we had five or six freshmen. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So it was eight of us. Yeah. So we had six freshmen with us, and we really just needed that to humble us. I think going into the playoffs, we ended up uh, winning the whole uh, region tournament by like thirty a game, and then we went down to the nationals. It was just about winning, really, at that yeah, point. Of yeah, I was there. You know what I mean? Uh, I had a couple side bets with my family, just doing things that <laughs> that year because I was about to be twenty one. So yeah. my twenty first birthday was coming up. So I was really just locked in, honestly. From um, like you said. Not coming out of high school, I had a couple offers. My SAT scores was just shitty. You know yeah. what I mean? So that's what really killed me not going to Division One. Uh, Merrimack came knocking at the door, honestly, uh, in the AAU tournament. I had like 41. I had just switched to uh, the Jersey Shore, uh, the Shore Shots right here out of Neptune. I played with them too. Yeah, I played with the, the Shore Shots, but it was crazy because I played with Hugo Boss. I played with Roy Mabry, wow. uh, Sean Grennan from Manasquan. He was good. Uh, Matt Vadis. We were all on the same team. Uh, and it was crazy because I was supposed to play on the New Jersey Elite with Fu uh, Fuquan Edwin. There was a couple guys from up north, and uh, they had the tryout at a hoop group. So I walk in. And the coach from, I just told Hugo Balls, like, I'm about to switch teams or whatever. Felt bad. Roy had just left uh, probably, like, two, three months ago. So the team was already, like, breaking up a little bit. So I was like, I'm about to leave. I walk into the door. Both teams is together. And they're like, surprise, surprise. So they're all one team they now. They became a team. So short shots A and B. You know what they yeah, did? They, they put do me like on the B team. Oh, come on, You were dog. pissed. You were pissed. Come on, dog. They can't do that. You just told me I was going to be on the elite team. Yeah, now yeah. I'm on the B team, and I'm looking for offers. It's about to of be course. my senior year. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? So it was it was a slap in the face. But that first game I came out, uh, I had like 41, I think, and they offered me right there. They came down the next day, talked to me and my mom right in my living room, and I was just like, yeah, I love y'all. You know what I mean? Yeah, it, yeah. Was, it was a genuine connection right from the jump. Sure. I mean, you, you can't pass that up, like opportunities like that where you hear about the B team. You could just right there. You could be pissed off, yeah, not play well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Nah, my whole career has been a lot of obstacles. Uh, right after that, I went to, right out of high school, I went to Merrimack, right in North Andover, uh, Massachusetts, red shirt of the season. Uh, going into my second year, the NCAA just said something about, like, my uh, scores or something about my classes. I couldn't play until January, and this was the second year. Now I'm there two years. I yeah. just broke the record, so I'm like, nah. So I'm like, I'm going to go home. Uh, it was crazy because I didn't want to go to Brookdale. I was supposed to go to um, Southern Idaho. Uh, okay. I don't know mm -hmm. if you know Pierre Jackson. That I went don't. to Baylor. Okay. Point yeah. guard. He's like 5'8". They had just won the national championship, D1 Juco, and I was supposed to go there. Uh, and it was crazy because I didn't have enough credits from Merrimack because I was out there. I didn't, wasn't passing. You know what I mean? It was, it was just me out there just really partying, having of fun. Course. You know what I mean? I was 18, 19. <laughs> yeah, you young guy. Yeah, I was young. You know what I mean? So when I came back home, I think it just humbled me uh, knowing that I was back home, not liking that, knowing that I was a top guy, leaving out, knowing I should have been away from home. And I was just like, there's only one way out of here. You just got to win the national championship. You know what I mean? So I took, uh, it's crazy, I took 23 classes in one year uh, to get my associates. I only played one year at Brookdale. I was supposed to play two. But I told him right from the jump, if I come here, I'm, I'm going to make sure I get my associates and go. Good. So uh, I took those 23 classes, got my associates. Uh, Wilmington came, uh, went to Wilmington. Um, How do you like it there? That was that was dope. It was dope. It was really fun. Well, it was crazy because uh, when I first got to Wilmington, right, I walked on the campus and I had a uh, apartment there right away. So I'm a junior, and now I'm coming from like, all right, I had to humble myself, but now I'm back out here in the real world. Now I'm good, you yeah. know what I mean? But yeah. There's no supervision, I'm straight. So <laughs> that's when I just started uh, 
but I already already came from really the obstacles of uh, Merrimack uh, High School. You know what I mean? So yeah. I was a lot older at mm-hmm. that point, and I knew that I just wanted to go overseas. And in my mind, I really just wanted to keep saying to myself, who went overseas from Division Two? Who went overseas from Monmouth Regional? Who went overseas from there? You know what I mean? And it just kept driving me once I got to Wilmington. And uh, really, I think it was just that was that was a great spot to go to. You know what I mean? It was close to home. My yeah. family could come to the games. Um, we upset. Who did we upset? UMass, I think it was. UMES. Uh, who went to? Oh, who, don't tell me UMBC. No, no, no. Who went to St. John Vanny? Eshak Pitt. You guys remember okay. him? No, I don't. Ah, uh, Eshak Pitt. He went to he went to St. John Vanny, and then he went to. Uh, Maryland Eastern Shore. Okay. So my junior year, we upset them, Division One team. My senior year, we played against Philadelphia University. Now, this is a crazy story. Uh, Herb McGee, he actually scored 1,000 points as a player at Philly U, and then he went to be a coach. He was the coach there, and he was about to get his 1,000th win that night. So we're on 999, like it's 999. Of course. They set it up the right time. Us versus Wilmington, they think they're just going to smack us. And, and we you, came in there and beat them. You know, I, know I, had like, I think I had like 18 that game. Uh, we came in there and beat them. They had the, the mayor of Philadelphia was in there. Jay Wright was in there. <laughs> they were probably they all thought They had the cameras, everything. Was, everything was set <laughs> the up for confetti was ready and everything. shit. That game was crazy. Yeah, it was supposed to be like a like a victory, like victory a, run. A like sure fire through the park. Like and it was like, crazy because yeah, the next this. morning I woke up and then like right on the bottom you see uh, the Wilmington beats Philly U on ESPN and yeah. then the highlights yeah. like the couple clips that we had. So I was like, that's dope. You know what I yeah. mean? Division we still went Division Two, but it made it on ESPN. Still doing things that I like to do. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and wanted to do. You know what I mean? If I went Division One, uh, Brookdale really actually as well gave me a nice commercial too. That's I definitely got to shout them out. Uh, they put me on the side of the bus, so it was like things that I wanted to do. If I went Division One, I, I was still able to do them, and I and I made it happen. You know what I mean? And after I left Wilmington, uh, I still had that same mindset. I still wanted to uh, just prove people wrong. I had no agent. Uh, I actually went out right after I graduated, uh, fell into a fake agent, uh, lost some money with him. Uh, and then I actually came back home. I remember it. Came back home. I started working for the borough at Ten Falls. Okay. I was mad as hell. Yeah. I yeah. just came from playing four, five, six, ten years of basketball. Yeah. Somebody scams me, and then I'm I'm on the back of the sanitation truck. Yeah. So I'm down, really mad. You know, anybody would have gave up at that point. Of course. You know what I mean? But me, just I don't know, just that just that dog. Yeah. You know what I mean? I just I just went through it, and then I kept going. Uh, I got actually linked up with a guy in Philadelphia, went on tour in Canada twice out there, and then uh, I got signed to CB Villa Bledo out in Spain for okay. a season out there. Then came home. Uh, I was coaching at Brookdale, the girls' team, ran into my girlfriend, and uh, the rest is history, man. Now I'm coaching at uh, Rowan Gloucester. She's coaching at uh, Delaware Tech. Got her master's. I got my bachelor's. We awesome. got a great daughter, one years old. She'll be you know what I mean? So right now, really, we're just trying to go up. We're just trying to go up from here, you know what I mean, and yeah. build that power couple and just really yeah. just take over the basketball world in New Jersey. Well, yeah, yeah, I mean, I think you have a good starting point. You you have, listen, you have the experience. Like, you know, I, I always hate seeing these guys that are talented. Like, they're so talked about all the time, and then they don't live up to it. But the guys who really – or under talked about like you and have a chip on your shoulder and every situation where you know you're not supposed to do good in you did mm-hmm. so no nah, really that's the biggest thing i'm gonna be honest with you uh my dad's been in he was in prison since i was three months old he came out uh my sophomore year we were playing cba at brookdale he called me the night before and he said uh I, and it was crazy because i just picked up the phone oh it's your dad i'm like my dad this has been 16 years you know what i mean i'm a yeah. sophomore now <laughs> he's like, yeah, I'm coming to the game tomorrow. In my mind, I was like, I'm not losing to them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's the Elite Eight. Boom, beat them. We in the Final Four now, the Ritaka. I'm a sophomore at this yeah. point. You know what I mean? I'm doing things. I don't have nobody to look up to. Nobody did it before me. I'm just paving the way for myself just off of my lifestyle and what I grew up and didn't have. You know what I mean? Yeah. That I wanted and I just wanted to provide for uh, my daughter if I ever had one or son, whatever it was, which was now it is my daughter. So it's like now I'm in the right position. You know what I mean? I got everything. Everything I worked for is paying off for now. Yeah. And I'm still working. So who got next? 
Uh, yeah, I, I really want to get into that, man, because, <laughs> like, the crazy thing is someone sent that to me, and I, I this was during quarantine, of course, and mm-hmm. no sports are going on, so people yeah. are going crazy. I mean, we're big Huge sports market guys. for that sort of thing. And I someone said to me, I'm like, dude, that's such a good idea, because I see that stuff on YouTube, yeah. and I was talking to you about that. I see that all online, but there's not anything like that in Jersey, mm-hmm. and that's what really content creation is, where you're filling a need, and people people want that. Yeah, like, yeah. they don't know they want it yet, but then you fill it, and dude, you're almost at, like, 5K followers, and when you go on live, I was talking to JR, you you would probably get more people live than us, <laughs> because <laughs> yeah. people, and people are engaging. I watched the, the 1v1s that he has, and people are like, they're, they're, they're ever, I love the Instagram refs, they're like, oh, that's a foul, that's not a foul, what are you talking, <laughs> everyone's just going crazy at each other in the comments, it's so yeah. funny. So, so where did that, and the idea to actually do this really come from? So like, it's crazy, because I actually went down, I actually live an hour and away from my hometown now. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, I'm, in, I'm up by Cherry Hill, South Jersey, so. Okay. Uh, they have the no man's land. They have a basketball league up there in South Jersey, one-on-one thing that they started. And um, one of the guys on my national championship team, uh, Joe, he actually was playing in it. So I just went to support him. Uh, quarantine had actually just started, and it was crazy because I was like, all right, it's been a month. I want to get out of the house. I want to go see it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And my lady's like, no, don't go. You Make sure you wear a mask. I'm like, yeah. I want to see it. So I go out there. Uh, it was really crazy, a nice experience. They, the last game, they didn't get to finish. But in my mind, the whole time, me, I was just thinking, like, I can do this. You know what I mean? I can do this. So uh, a week later, it was crazy because Joe went back and he started his own league in his hometown mm-hmm. because my in my mind, I was like, he's not going to drive almost two hours every week to come play out here. Yeah. A week later, he started his. No Man's Land shut down because of uh, COVID. Uh, so he goes and starts his. So I'm on his live. They have a live. So I'm on his live, tapping in every day, trying to get on the card. Uh, they were, they wanted us to come down there. I'm not going to say they didn't want us to come down there, but he wanted us to come on there. It took a little bit. They probably shut down for probably like two or three weeks, maybe a month, and that was just it. You yeah. know what I mean? That's when I was like, it's time to go. And mm-hmm. and I was at home just kept in my mind just saying, like, just start it, just do it, just do it, just do it. So uh, I actually saw my partner, uh, Tay Gillier, he was actually down there. And uh, I knew he would be, like, a good person to work with. I knew he would actually uh, help me out in what I was trying to do. Uh, Him being actually closer here, already hands-on. So uh, I linked up with him, and honestly, uh, when we put it together, I told him right away, I was like, look, we're going to get a lot of buzz from this, and we're going to be better than both of those two. Just because I know how I am and I know how I operate, I want to be better than those two other leagues. You know what I mean? And I want to go viral. So uh, I think we did it the right way. We started off at uh, Ocean uh, Wayside Park. We started there, uh, no permit. We just showed up. You know what I mean? It's probably like three, four hundred people. COVID yeah, just yeah. started. They was like, "Come on!" So the second <laughs> week, so the second week, we did it again, ran it back there again, and then that's when they were just like, "Nah, we can't have it." They took the rims down on us. Really? Uh, and this was when the time when the riots and stuff were going. So honestly, uh, me. Personally, I just was like, I got to keep my voice up. You know what I mean? My voice was being heard already, I think, in those first two weeks because of just the amount of people that was actually coming. Um, and like I said, though, it was funny because my girlfriend literally was like, no, don't do not do this. COVID, COVID. But then once she came out there, it was like, this is this is cool. Yeah. You know what I mean? This is a nice experience. It brings the community safe, together. Yeah, if we keep it safe, then it was nice. So me in my mind, I'm like, all right, keep it safe, keep it safe. So I go out. Um, there's actually a nurse. She actually came out. She takes a temperature check. Good. So that's what I started to do every week was like build off of the last week. Everything people were saying was bad. I was like, all right, let me fine tune it so that they don't shut it down. So mm-hmm. we went to Ocean the first two weeks. Then we go to Long Branch. Uh, we had a um, Zoom meeting with them. They really didn't want to have it there. And that's when I saw it going downhill, and I'm like, I can't stop it now. You know what I mean? We're on our card three, going on card four. Uh, we'll take a week off. So we took a week off, and then um, we went to Tenton Falls. It was crazy. We went to Tenton Falls. We were setting up. I knew the park was going to be perfect. Uh, the chief of police came out there and was like, you got to shut this down. You don't have a permit. And then I literally told him, I'm like, you can you can literally write me a fine right now because I'm having this. Or, you know what I mean? Like, I grew up here. Literally mm-hmm. everything we're talking about today is from Tenton Falls. I grew up right around the corner from here. You know what I mean? So there, I'm not doing nothing wrong. I'm doing temperature checks. There's no fighting. There's no smoking, no nothing. You can hear it on the mic. People
people yeah. were talking about it. So um, he just let it go, and I told him it would be good. And then uh, the next morning, he actually texted me like, yo, you're a man of your word. I appreciate that. You guys cleaned up, this and that. And then they let us go for the rest of the summer good. until yep. it was time for the permit to be up. So yep. uh, definitely a shout-out to Ten Falls Police, Ten Falls Recreation, man. I knew they would back me up uh, coming home. So I just wanted to do something for the community uh, and really just start something off. You know what I mean? I wanted to show that uh, Mom and Three is, you know, number one because that's where I'm from. Uh, and then Central Basketball and Jersey Shore Basketball has players, too. You know sure. what I mean? It's not just South Jersey and North Jersey. Somebody has to hold it down for Central Jersey when it comes to the basketball world. You know what I mean? So for me, I just took it personal, and I was like, we got to do it here. So two questions. One, you, so you do believe, one, Central Jersey exists? <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> and two, two that, that's what I was originally scared about. Uh, with the, with the Central <laughs> Jersey exists. <laughs> There's people that say people it doesn't. Say it doesn't. <laughs> people, well, it people doesn't make sense. Literally says, and that's like the one of the biggest things on our pages is like people fighting over. It. So people up around here, obviously say it does does. People in South Jersey do, but North Jersey people are just like, no, it's not. Whatever. This is it's South just North Jersey. and South. Yeah. So you mentioned uh, earlier that like a couple like early on, obviously there were concerns about you know everything being COVID friendly and the fact that you have, you know, were shut down and had to move a little bit. I mean, you said that you were doing temperature and masks and stuff like that, but how else did you go about making sure that there were no concerns in that realm? Uh, honestly, after the mask, you, you, I mean, you got to think about it. You got people out there from, honestly, if you went out there, you got people out there, there was three months olds out there mm -hmm. to about 50 to 60 year old mm -hmm. people out there. So at that point, when you put those people in a group and you tell them, put a mask on, we're taking temperature, mm -hmm. you a grown man, I'm a grown man, she a grown man. If you don't want to stand six feet, I'm not going to stop at the game every two seconds to say, yeah. you know what I mean? You know it's a, a virus going on. You know it's going on too. So, And nobody got sick out there. That was number one. Uh, number two, me personally, I was just like, hopefully nobody gets sick. You know what I mean? At that point, when you're putting something like that together in the middle of a pandemic, it's hard to finish that off. I don't know at that yeah. point. You know what I mean? I really don't. And um, that was the biggest thing that my girlfriend was saying was like, the people are going to yeah. people are going to be worried. What are they going to say? So I really just tried to simmer it down. I think by getting that temperature check, and I think it helped it out a little bit. Uh, there's I, no way to hunt like a hundred percent. There's no, there, yeah. there's no right what, answer. What can you do? No, and especially when you're outside. I mean, one, you're doing it outside, and that's like the best thing you can do in yeah. that situation. The only thing you can worry about is like players getting close to each other. As long as you know that those people. And a couple aren't. of the players had masks on, like they tried oh, they to wear were a mask. Yeah. yeah, they were playing. All the right, referee has a mask on the whole yeah. time. Yeah. You know what I mean? And the people athletes. on the court, we try to get them to wear it. But pro you got to think about some days it was like play. 81 degrees out there, too. Yeah. yeah. 90 degrees out there sometimes. So it was like. You can't wear masks like that. Yeah. It's terrible. <laughs> I'm playing one on one with like no mass and I'm done. <laughs> Two possessions, I'm out. <laughs> yeah, it was it was But I, I think at that point you took a chance. You did. Because yeah, I did, honestly. You're you're gonna get some people, no matter what, saying, Oh my god, this is horrible, it's non COVID compliant. But guess what? The five hundred people that live for your live streams and show up and you mm -hmm. make the community come together, mm -hmm. that's what that's who it's worth. Yeah, yeah, that's really what it is, honestly. Those people right there, the ones that were on the lives every night, sometimes we get it would be like eleven or twelve at night and it's hundred and twenty people on live, like just watching us talk. And I got a black screen up or I got the who got next screen up and they're just listening, laughing, typing. So I was just like, honestly, this is taking over. You know what I mean? We saved the summer with this one, honestly. Of course. I mean, there's there's nothing. Uh, we talk about the Jersey Shore Basketball League. Is that still, uh, that's, did that not go on this summer? Uh, JSBL, yeah. So when the JSBL, that was another thing. When the JSBL really wasn't uh, no man's land in the other league, it was just uh, basketball in general, you could tell, was going to shut down for the summer. So it was just like, who's going to save it? You know what I mean? And me, the summertime is when I stay in shape. It's nice. I like to play in the summer. So I usually play in the Manasquan League. Sure. Um, I didn't even tell you guys about that one. Won three years in a row in the Manasquan League, but you know what I mean. I, that's the one. I, it's like those outdoor courts, but they're they're nice. Or is that, yeah, is that the one yeah, I'm thinking yeah, about? I've seen nice yep. Yeah, yeah. And they have real. They have good players playing there. Yeah, I they do. Know. I'm waiting on the key to the city. Um, but yeah. <laughs> Uh, that was a nice league. Uh, JSBL is a good league. I just the last JSBL season, I just won in there uh, actually too with okay. uh, Larson Ford. 
So I got one in every in every league, outside, inside, on the books, off the books. Valentino or Neil, which one you want? <laughs> we'll you know what I'm call. saying? I mean, yeah. I mean. <laughs> When I'm, I'm, I'm just asking, when I'm going to get a key to the city or Hall of Fame? <laughs> Which one is it? Somebody got to do it. There's got to be a jersey Blue short. check. <laughs> dude, that's my the, biggest thing. Can I get freaking... the first blue check with 2K followers? Dude, I don't no, even want I the know. 10K. Dude, I just dude, want it's not, bro, it's not no, even you'll, the check. Bro, it's you'll not be possible. surprised. No, you, you'll be surprised. We've seen some people. We have 27K. They're never going to give us no, a check. We they're, can't they're get not, oh, yeah, I saw that. I was like, yo. I was... I saw this guy on Instagram. 400 followers. Bro, he had 400 followers. He had a blue check mark. I'm like, I want to mess him. Bro, I know you fucking bought that. <laughs> I know you threw someone 20 bucks to do that. There's no, that sh- doesn't make yeah. sense. Because there's so many yeah. other people that I would give a check mark like you, us. Yeah, well, I mean, honestly, you you have a better chance of getting it than, than we do. Just, <laughs> I do. No, well, you, honest well, you, you, you might. I'm not because, even trying to, but I'm just saying, in the yeah. world of the people that you're giving it to, yeah. Yeah. what is their resume? What are sure. they doing? Besides going on Instagram and showing their body off or whatever it is, buying like, fake followers or something yeah. like that. What did, what did they? What work did they put in? Yeah, no, I know most of them don't. The only reason I was saying you have more of a chance than we do is because the reason that we won't get it, the reason most like pages like us don't get it, is because it's not like us, you know, yeah, we're posting yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Posi- but like yeah, the like the podcast, the podcast is, is our face, but the page is just like a, we're not. It's not a personality. It's not a person. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, I get what you're but you know, like. If you applied for it, you know you should apply you for should it. Just, I mean, just fucking just, 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 dude, bro, I mean, no. it's not that hard. You just go into the app and then say apply for verified check mark. Oh, bro, see if you get easy. it. See, me is not even that deep. <laughs> I can't do it. You just no. The thing is, he wants to wake up one day and just see. He just he's got. He's gonna, he gave it to me. me. I'm gonna just keep putting it working until yeah. it just comes. You until know it what I mean? Comes. Just like interviews like this, you don't get them. They don't. You know what I mean? Yeah. You gotta put that work in. You gotta make a who got next. You gotta do something. For somebody to recognize you, you know what I mean? To put your name out there. Well, dude, if you see, like, if you go from our first episode to episode 19, you got to see how much, not only better we've gotten at this. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like, the quality, audio, We're not doing it in my living room anymore? Yeah, we used to do it in his living room. (laughs) Now, this is the ultimate color. Now we got our own studio in here. We got, uh, But you got a story to tell, though. You know what I mean? Everybody has a story to tell, and that's the thing. I have a story to tell, and I'm not done writing it. So when I'm done writing it, then... I'll tell you the story. You got a long way to go. You know probably. what I mean? <laughs> we could have made a couple movies by now. I went to three different schools in three different states. Yep. Yeah. You know what I mean? I played in two different countries. Oh. I coached at two different colleges. How yeah. old are you? 28. Oh, you're young. <laughs> you're, that's I mean, thing. as I said, like if you would have said like, yeah, I'm like 60. <laughs> that's, 60. that's like a whole life story right there. But you done, that's what I'm saying, the stuff that you've done at your age... Yeah. Listen, my daughter, right? She's okay. one years old in what, four months? One, yeah, one years old, four months. Okay. She's been to Mexico. She's been to South Carolina. Awesome. She's been to, where else did she go? She went somewhere else on a plane. Oh, uh, Texas. Okay. Twice. I got friends that live right around the corner from here. Sure. Ain't even been on a plane yet. Yeah. Yeah. She got a passport. Yeah. Where they do that at? So it isn't always about me, you know what it's I'm saying? Not, yeah. I got a whole empire now. Good. She got her master. She coaching, head coaching. You know what I'm saying? And, and we don't really post it. We don't talk about it. But what we're trying to do behind the scenes is really just build up that empire and just look at us now. You know what I mean? And, and if you want to be like us, just watch what we're doing and just try to follow it. You know what I mean? Try to follow the wave. I swear for a second there, when you said she got her master's and she's coaching, I was like, damn, that's a lot for a six-month-old or like oh, eight-month-old no, no. to do. I was like, Wait, what? <laughs> it's like, your daughter is so smart. <laughs> nah, that's my lady, man. My lady, no, man. She's been no. coaching for a while, too. That's the thing. And she's and only where, 20. where you coach? Where she she coach? coached at Delaware Tech. Awesome. Yeah, Delaware Tech. She was just at Salem. Now she's at Delaware Tech. She was at uh, Seaford before that high school. So she's got some years in there, too, as well. She's a teacher. So you know what I'm saying? This is what we're doing. You're not going to break it. You know no, what I mean? I've been, I've been building it up for a while. Well, nothing is handed to either of you. Mm-mm. That's the thing. You put you put in your work, and, and you're the kind of people where, they're, especially with players, they're going to resonate more with you. You know, mm-hmm. the guy, you know, it's, ne- it's never the player who gets all the playing time, who is the coach's favorite player. They don't need any advice because they're, they're going to go. It's the player who's on the rocks. You know, they might not get that playing time. They, they, they're a good player, um, and then they ball out. They But they need that confidence where you could connect with them, mm-hmm. and then they do. Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah, I mean – 
dude, this is I'm happy to have you on. I, I unfortunately I haven't made my way out to, to one of the. Do you, when, do you know when one of the next cards is going to be? Uh, next summer. Who stopped it for this summer? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Because yeah. it got a little cold, so I'm like, all right, we did enough. Uh, no, nothing happened bad. Everything was in the good light, so it was a good time to stop it. You know what I mean? Until next year. Uh, for me, I think that next year will be w w even crazier because of the people that didn't play this summer. Sure. The people that will be getting ready for it all well, winter. You had Scotty, Scotty Lewis. I mean, that, that was one of the – people were, like, telling me, yo, Scotty's, Scotty's playing. And he's – you know, he, he could be league bound. I mean, of yeah, course, yeah, I, yeah. I think I think he is. He's one of the best. I mean, Randy with him and uh, Brian were yeah, yeah. amazing. We I think I, I went to the short conference championship. It was them versus I want to say Rumson or yeah, whoever. Yeah, it was at Monmouth like, University. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, they, I think I did see that one. One of them's at Villanova. I think uh, Scotty's at Florida. Is, yeah, yeah, it's crazy because. Uh, when I was doing it, that was the one of the things I wanted to do was try to get people that were either played overseas or well known as well on the social media world to get on there and play on the card. And once that happened, having Elijah Perkins, Scotty, yeah. Shakina Richardson, people sure. like that, uh, around the shore too as well it helps it out you know what i mean and that's what makes people reach out from around the shore because they're watching those people individually as well sure. and w following their career so it's like oh you're playing in this tournament oh you're playing now uh oh you haven't played in two three years oh now you're playing you know what i mean so they want to come out and see them watch them uh i really think that that's what separated us from all the other leagues was those people actually coming out and i really do yeah. respect that and applaud that and appreciate that um, but are you, are you friends with him? How did you get him to come out? Yeah, Scotty, ever since he went to uh, Rainey, I think I was coaching at Brookdale that freshman okay. year. Um, and I went to every game that he had, uh, actually, that freshman year. And then sophomore year, I think I went to almost every game he had. And then junior year, I was living in Maryland, but I would be texting him. We'd be talking. At that point, we built a relationship uh, and just talking all the time. And really, it was, it was a no-brainer because uh, – once I hit him up, he was just like, yeah, I want to do it. You know what I mean? He was basically saying, yeah, before I was asking him what I was asking him of course. Uh, to play. And he already said somebody uh, called him out about playing the other day in a park. So I was like, it was the best time to do it. Really, it was about the timing with that one. It just all happened at the right time. Uh, and that's really what happens with everything that happens good. It's just about timing. Uh, having him on the card was really just dope. Uh, like you said, he's league bound. So that'll be that's history right there. Once that day was <laughs> yeah. over, nothing happened. I was like, that was that was dope. You know what I mean? And I mean to be honest, I mean next summer you get players like that again, and all this shit isn't happening anymore. I could mm -hmm. see it just getting gigantic. I more mean, people, you're gonna have not 500 people, you're gonna have a thousand people. You know, yeah, it's gonna be yeah, yeah. insane. I'll be honest with you. I think next year we're gonna have some NBA guys out there. Like, it's going to be really crazy because they're already tapping in now, trying to play or talk about it. And it's like, it's too late now. We're not going in the gym. Everybody yes. wants to see you outside. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just tradition at this point. Yeah, I, I wouldn't say do it inside. I would say keep it at a park. Yeah. 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 I'm going to be honest with you. Outside is the best place to do it uh, because it's like the old New York style. You it know is. what I mean? But like Rucker Park. Me or... personally, another thing I was saying or thinking of in my mind was just uh, – I've never seen one-on-one -on -one basketball in Monmouth County. Ever. And if you yeah. ask any of the old heads or anybody around, they didn't even, they were yeah. like going to it and saying like, why didn't we do this? You know what I mean? So really, like I said, it just saved the summer. It was it gave people something to do every Sunday. I didn't want to do it twice a week and uh, water it down. I think that every Sunday it just gave people something to look forward to every Sunday. Yeah. I want to get into the having these big players. We do this too where you come on our podcast, man, and our fans become yours. Mm -hmm. And same thing with the opposite way around. When we feature you, some of your fans are going to check us out. So you have yeah, Scotty. Yeah, yeah. Scotty's people are going to come, you know, and like check his us stuff. Out. Yeah, definitely. So that that's just big. I want to, you know, we're not going to go on too much longer. Uh, I, I, this is a more of a personal question i got to ask you. It's... Uh, <laughs> and I'm going to take offense to this, whatever you say. I, I, okay? Yeah. I, who do you think is the greatest basketball player of all time? Me? Yeah. If you say you, oh, that's okay, but it can't nah, be nah, someone. Nah, it can't be. Nah, nah, I ain't one of <laughs> Who, those, who's yeah. the greatest basketball player of all time? Michael Jordan. Uh, uh, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm, I'm a LeBron. I'm going to be honest with you. LeBron's number two, though, but Michael Jordan definitely is number one, bro. Yeah. You got, He's you got every single argument in his head you right now ready to come at you. Man. 
You can't go away he's like, from he'll, that. Uh, his number I'm one, his number one thing. I'm gonna be honest with you. I watch LeBron. I'll be hyped to watch. Like when the game's coming on all day, I can't wait. I love LeBron right now. Right now in our generation, LeBron is the best player. He's the goat right well, now. Well, we yes. grew up with like with him. Yeah. But what I'm saying to you is. Michael Jordan is the best player to ever play this game, dog. To go three, to win three, go play baseball, go play tennis, go chill, come back, win three more. Man, I just he's gonna be like, the, but the defense he played against wasn't that I'm good. I'll be honest with you, <laughs> he, bro, LeBron the, the, James with those triple doubles and all those numbers against the Warriors, that was just crazy. You know what I mean? 20. Going ten times to the to the finals, that's that's unheard of that's what yeah. I'm saying he's definitely second but until he gets six I, Listen, can't I think put he's gonna get there. at least five I'm telling you right now they're winning this year I, I have a bet on DraftKings I think he'll be there when his son comes Dude, like, oh I my think god he'll be there playing. well he's like three years playing. away he's like three years away with his son I mean um I, I just don't think that because Jordan the year when he played baseball his team the next year with only Scottie Pippen they went to the conference, or no, they went to the semifinals in the East. Like, they were still a team. When LeBron leaves, the team, his team's a lottery team. They're the worst team in the league. So I'm just yeah, saying, but that's... in terms of, you see the impact. Like, LeBron is the finals. He yeah. is, when he's on a team, he goes to the finals. All right, now let me ask you this. What year did you graduate high school? 2015. 15? What year did you graduate? Yeah, 2015. Who was the best high school basketball player in the shore you've seen play? 2015. Not even 15. Just over your whole four. Damn, Best I, I high school there. player. Um, well, I was there. Probably Carl Anthony Towns in New Jersey. Oh, all right. No, in the shore, though. Oh, in the shore. In, in the shore. Um... Who's the best one? I want to know who y'all best player was that y'all saw play in the shore. I mean, as far as I'm, I'm trying to think of. Like all the way to the shore conference tournament. That's it. Because um, Scotty Lewis was after when I was in college, but when I was still in high school, there was like this guy Mike Amon in, at Raritan. Mm-hmm. He was good. Um, mm-hmm. There's that Mike Mike Jacecki was really cool. He went on to play football at what Penn State, I think. Or so, yeah. Now he, Mike now he, Amon was tough. He was big. Yeah, he uh, was like a big yeah, guy. He was a big guy. I'm trying to think who who else. You know, listen, I'm more of I, I never was so big into high school. Like my friend, funny enough, when all you, all the good high school players played in the one on the in your tournament, yeah, he would text me like all this stuff. He would send me the line. He's like, bro, these guys are sick. Check it out. Like he still follows our friend Thompson. He's a big yeah. high school basketball fan. So he's like, bro, this is gonna be a sick card. Yeah, yeah. I'm more of like you talk about college guys, NBA. Um, I don't know. I, I'd have to I'd have to look that up. Why? Who you got? I'm kind of in the same boat. Me personally, I like college I'm basketball. I'm not a those, big. I'm waiting for those top fives, top tens to come out, decades, something. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm waiting to see what what they put down because I I got it. I gotta figure something out. You know what I mean? Listen, I'll yeah. tell you right now, we can't help you so much with that because the Asbury <laughs> Park Press doesn't oh, like us so us much. Now. <laughs> Why? Well, because <laughs> he well, said they well, hate us. Okay, well they hate, they hate us because I mean I don't know if they actually watch it, but like five episodes. <laughs> no, they do. They five do. episodes ago, Max said, "Fuck the Asbury Park Press." <laughs> um, <laughs> no, because they wrote an article before quarantine saying, like, <laughs> "No, yeah. they they well before going even farther back, they were like, oh, we love you guys. We want to write an article about you guys. Your page is so funny, and the podcast is great.'" And then they released an article during the pandemic quarantine where they were like, "Top t- top eight new jersey based podcast to watch and they didn't put us on it and they put all these other podcasts that were like dog no shit. offense dog shit yeah like <laughs> no following <laughs> not funny like we get views none we of get them listens, we no, get views. none yeah. of them did video it was just audio only which is just something we just put in that extra work <laughs> to do that but like and we were we were just like what the fuck like why would you so not put us the on next, there? The next podcast, our guest brought up like the Asbury Park Press. I was like, honestly, I looked at the camera. I was like, fuck the Asbury Park Press. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I like it's freedom of speech. You can say what you want. Yeah, but I mean, keep going though. You can't worry about <laughs> no, that, man. Y'all just got to keep going. We use a chip on the show. Right here is dope. Nobody. Yeah, I don't, no, I, don't, I mean, I we we just this, yeah, man. we just joke about it. We do that with pretty much everybody we have on this podcast. Usually with with the individual people, we're cool with them, and yeah, we still talk to them after. But whenever we have like a business on. 
except for like maybe one or two. They never talk to us again after they're on the podcast. Bro, they reason, they use us for the podcast and they're like, all right, fuck you guys. Yeah. Like, we're not, we're done. We're, we're chill. out. We're chill. Like every individual person we have on loves us. We, we keep in contact. We fuck with them. We repost stuff. But all the businesses, are, it's just because we post sometimes like edgy stuff. Yeah, so I can really. see how they don't want to be associated with us. I think also we make fun of them sometimes. I and do. They don't like yeah, that. Yeah, we talk like, shit I, on like, some people. There's like, like pliables, for example. We talk shit about pliables all the time on the page, but they're okay. He's, he was cool with it. Like he didn't care. Oh, y'all have pliables Yeah, up we had yeah, him the on founder. two weeks oh, ago. I thought, yeah. well, listen to that. Yeah. That's crazy. That's, yeah. that's my spot. He was fine with it because he's like a normal person, but some people get offended. Like we made fun of the butcher's block and all the other like local businesses were like, all right, fuck Monmouth County memes. Like, <laughs> uh, like, like, I don't know. All right. Yeah, we're gonna Max is like, ah, stop. I don't, <laughs> please right. don't. You're killing us. You're killing us. <laughs> no, but you got to let them know. You feel me? If you didn't mean nothing by it and y'all be chilling, you yeah. got to let them know just, at some point so that they don't always, you know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, yeah. they're just going to, how many you have? Two, two a month? Yeah. At the end of the day, you know what I mean? You don't have too many yeah. coming out a month. Yeah. Now they got four a month. So yeah. every time they hear about it or every time yeah. they think about it, they're going to be talking shit about you. Yeah, guys, <laughs> guys, guys, we're just kidding, except actually, yeah, fuck, fuck not, you, Asbury Park Press. We're not kidding. We're not kidding. Not about the, as everything else, but Asbury Park Press, we still hate you. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah. So, Neil, do you have, uh, we're going to close this out. Do you have anything you want to plug really quickly? I mean, obviously, Who Got Next Basketball League, follow it. We're going to put it in our bio. But Absolutely. Yeah, definitely shout out Who Got Next Basketball League. Man, this shout out to uh, really just Monmouth County memes, Monmouth County in general, the Monmouth County ballers that have been playing, uh, just the whole community in general. Uh, like I said, I, I drive an hour and a way, uh, half away just to, to, to bring my back, my community, my hometown back to life, you know what I mean, and the energy back. So really that's the biggest thing, and I'm not looking for nothing for it, just – trying to bring the energy back to where I was and where I felt like, you know what I mean, or what I feel like is missing. So uh, that's really the biggest thing with me every day is uh, just strive for greatness, something LeBron says. That's what I'm saying. So, like, I, he's definitely Best second to me. Definitely but, second. Uh, you know what I mean? <laughs> and, and, and Dwayne Wade is just uh, fall down seven times, stand up eight. So those are two things that I go through life with, you know what I mean? And, yeah try to just really give to everybody else and just, you know what I mean, just keep going from there. But like I said, man, the career, the journey, um, it's not going to stop. You know what I mean? Who got next is one thing I might, next yeah. week might pop up with something else. That's just, that's just how my mind is. That's where I'm at right now. Uh, and we're going to keep giving you all everything we got. Yeah, and, and quickly, I just that actually brought up, man, as far as this page, we're getting to a point where, you know, this isn't so much our passion anymore. And it just because, you know, as far as you're saying about starting new things, mm -hmm. you know, who got next is is something you can never take away what you've done with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But definitely. you're obviously going to take it, take that experience to do new things. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so. and that's the best thing about it. You meet new people, uh, you get more ideas. So really the biggest thing now is just uh, do we want to uh, switch it up for the winter, uh, do 5-on-5, five five, have a league, do we want to do 2-on-2, two two, do 3-on-3, three three, you know what I mean? Really the biggest thing for me is just, just wait on the surprise of if that's what happens or do we just wait on the one-on-one. -on -one. So right now behind the scenes we're putting all that together. Uh, we're really thinking about what's the best option. You got to think in the gym again, COVID. You got to worry about those obstacles again. Do yeah. we want to go through that? Uh, do we want to uh, lessen the crowd of people? Because yeah. uh, you go indoors right now, you know it's going to be under 100 people. Oh, of course. You know what I mean? It's not going to be as fun. So really, that's the biggest thing we're waiting on um, to hear back about is just what they're going to do with that, what they're going to do with college basketball, high school basketball, what they're going to do with basketball in general. Uh, first, and then we'll figure it out from there, really. All right. Jared, do you have anything to say before we close out the 19th ever MCM podcast? This is like a bit. He asked me if I have anything to say, and I just said, like, nah, like, I'm, I don't give a <laughs> shit. Like, I, but I, I will actually say, I will actually say that I really like what you guys, what you're doing. I think that one of the things that we had, somebody who talked about sports, uh, basketball in this area specifically said that it's like really overshadowed by other areas in New Jersey. Mm -hmm. So I think that, you know, building up Monmouth County and Central Jersey basketball, especially for the high school um, realm is a really good thing, especially when a lot of high school players aren't really playing. Yeah, you know? yeah definitely. It's definitely a big deal. And I think that that's great. So. Okay, guys, thank you for watching Appreciate this episode you, of the MCM podcast. Neil, you're a dope guest. Thank you yes. for coming on. <laughs> guys, please like, subscribe, send to your friends, and we'll catch you on the next episode. Peace. Awesome.